Okay guys, I really want to thank your support because I have been getting uh, more subscribers on my YouTube channel. Um, they are telling me to do stuff like topology and set theory, which I'll probably do in due course. But because of um, what I'm studying now, which is called fluid mechanics, I'm going to just, let's finish up this chapter first, okay? So I really hope that, you know, this is in line with all the physics students, but I'm going to introduce a lot of mathematical treatment, a rigorous mathematical treatment, which I do hope if you study mathematics, you would like to know. Okay, so fluid mechanics, let's just continue. Now, our previous lesson, we did find the pressure gradient for a fluid that is at rest, okay? We basically got the basic equation for the pressure field, which is del pressure, take away the specific weight in the K component, and it's equals to the pressure, sorry, it's equals to the density times the acceleration. Okay, this was the equation that we got. And then remember, I also said that based on certain fluids, we let acceleration equals to zero. Later, we find fluids in linear motion. So acceleration takes an, another form. And then we can derive all these equations, okay? So for fluid at rest, the equation that we have is that the pressure, okay, the force is equal to the pressure times the area. And the pressure that we have is equal to the specific weight times the height plus pressure P0, okay? So at a certain, if we want a certain pressure, um, down the, the liquid, we're gonna take the pressure at the top, okay, and then plus the height that we go down in liquid and times by the specific weight. Okay, so this is the pressure that we have. So it's called a hydrostatic distribution. I remind you again, it's because the pressure varies linearly with the height, okay? Hydrostatic distribution. Okay, so now we know what the pressure gradient is like okay bearing in mind again that the fluids that we are studying are fluids at rest okay like i said again this is a specific type of fluid hydrostatic distribution so now we want to study okay the hydrostatic force on a plane surface okay uh what does that mean well that means that if we pick a certain surface in the fluid what is the force that is acting on that surface okay now it might come very easy from this equation over here well actually it is so if I were to draw an illustration, let's just say we've got a tank over here, we are, we are concerned and the, the fluid is like this, right? Okay, okay, we are concerned with this force over here. And this force, okay, for the sake of argument, we'll call it FR. Why is it FR? Because we want to say it's the resultant force, the resultant force acting at this surface over here. Now, I can just simply change the equation to be like that, okay? Uh, pressure times the area and pressure again I would say is the specific weight times the height. The, the height is over here and the specific weight is the weight of the liquid. One clarification I, that I would like to make is that there's a pressure over here that is the pressure from the atmosphere, okay? However, there's also another pressure over here that is the pressure from the atmosphere. That is why I have reduced this equation to simply the resultant force is equals to the pressure times the area. Sorry, yes, the pressure times the area and the pressure is given by this. We need not worry about the atmospheric pressure for now, okay? Because, like I said, this is the resultant force. So as you can see, these two atmospheric pressures balances out and we're just concerned with the resultant force at this point over here or this surface over here, okay? Well, have we already saw what we're looking for? Hydrostatic force on a plane surface, well, it's given to this. If the surface is parallel in this axis over here or it is flat, if we move into an inclined surface, Okay, the calculations get more involved and gets more interesting and we're gonna try to see what we have. Okay, so this is for a plane surface that is horizontal. Now, let's move to an inclined surface. Okay, this is the diagram that we have over here. Let's talk about the diagram a bit. The inclined surface, as you can see, is over here. The, the free surface here. So basically, what you're looking at is that there's water all over here, okay? So the water's all over here. This is the surface and we wanna find the hydrostatic force at this certain surface over there like so an arbitrary point now if you can see there's a little uh, underline here okay so we want to find the force that's acting on this little section of the surface okay now it's pan uh, sorry it's um rotated at an angle theta so it's inclined and the axis that we have defined is y goes in this direction x okay i, I would like to make this clarification x goes in this direction okay it's going out in out of the page However, we have panned the axis so that we can observe the, the arbitrary shape over here like so, okay? So if we were to just pan the axis, we would see from this direction, which is basically what we're seeing here, this is the arbitrary shape uh, that we want to find, or we want to find the force that's acting on this arbitrary shape over here, okay? And that is what we have. Now, using differential calculus, and this is where the mathematics come in, which is why I like it, or at least, you know, uh, mathematics students can take interest. Now, we, we use some differential calculus. We'll consider a small point on the arbitrary surface. 
and I have put the, the point over here like so, okay? So down here, there's a force acting over there and it's called DF. A, a small force acting at that, at that point over there. That point corresponds to the point over here, right? Well, we'll, we'll, label, that, we'll label that S as DA, okay? So it's a small point on the arbitrary surface. Now, what do we know about our pressure equation? Well, the pressure is equal to the specific weight times the height, okay? So what I can say now is that DF, okay, is going to be equals to Y, sorry, uh, the specific weight times height dA, okay? Basically what it means is that I will take the height, the height is going to be defined as here, okay, times by the specific weight of the liquid to get the pressure and I'll multiply by the area, the small area over here because why I'm dealing with a small force, okay? That is what we have over here. So this gives us the, the small amount of force acting at a small area over there of the whole arbitrary shape that we want to find. Okay, so now we will go straight into calculating the resultant force, which is basically equal to integrate the specific weight height dA, okay, of the area A. Let's just call this area A like so. Okay, so this is the force. Now, I will label this force as over here like so, okay? So, if all of you are, who are familiar with differential calculus, the total force is basically the sum of these small forces dF over here to get the total force acting on the area A, like so, okay? Now, I can re-express H, okay, into this one over here. Why? Because the y-axis goes from here like so, right? Okay, remember, y-axis goes in this direction, so H now becomes, okay, I can integrate y sine theta, okay? So I got a specific weight, y sine theta dA. Sorry, dA. Okay, and then I would now bring out the specific weight, which is a constant, sine theta, which is a constant, and integrate y, integrate y in terms of dA, okay? So, how good is our mechanics, okay? What do we notice about this equation over here, or this integral sign? Integrate y dA. That is what we call the first moment of area. Okay, it is just termed that way. And the first moment of area is linked with the y coordinate of the centroid times by the area. Okay? Where well, this area corresponds to the area over here. Now, I'm going to briefly explain it. For those of you who really know first moment of area, would immediately write like this, like so. But I'm just going to make a quick explanation. Basically, what it's telling us is that we are taking, okay, a small area of the shape multiplied by the y coordinate, okay, as we are taking moments around the x-axis. Okay, if things didn't get more complicated enough. The x-axis is over here, so we want to take the moments, okay, of the small area and times by the y coordinate and then sum it all out for the whole area, like so. That will give us the y coordinate, okay, which is over here, I'll just label it as the y coordinate, okay, of the centroid multiplied by the whole area. That, that's just what it means because it, it, this, in something that individual forces, the moment of the individual forces would have to give us the moment of the whole area multiplied by that one y coordinate, or that y coordinate is called basically called the centroid, okay? So that is what it is. This is equal to this. So now we can just immediately write um, sine theta, okay, yc, the y coordinate of the centroid multiplied by the area where the area is the area of the whole shape, okay? After that, what do we recognize about this quantity over here? That quantity, okay, the y coordinate of the centroid multiplied by sine theta would bring, give us, okay, the h coordinate of the centroid, okay? So it will give us the h coordinate of the centroid and multiplied by area like so. Where this h coordinate of the centroid is given by, okay, this distance over here. Okay, I hope you can see that, right? You see, the, the y coordinate of the centroid is, is from here to here, so we multiply by theta, we'll just bring it on this side, the h coordinate of the centroid, given like so. If you are more comfortable using theta and the, and the y coordinate of the centroid, by all means, but we're just basically rewriting it to be uh, the h coordinate of the centroid, like so. Okay? So, that is what we have. Okay? The, hy the hydrostatic force on an inclined surface, okay, FR, Remember, remember, acting on this whole area like so, okay? Because we uh, took, we equate the first moment of the area to be equal to this, where this is the, the area, okay? So basically, the hydrostatic force on the inclined surface, okay, is equals to the specific weights multiplied by the h-coordinate of the centroid multiplied by the whole area. And obviously, you can, you know, use certain methods to calculate the whole area. Okay, now, direction, 
is done. Why? Because when we initially define the DF, DF is automatically in the direction perpendicular to the plane surface. Does that make sense? It is perpendicular to the inclined surface. So therefore, FR has to be perpendicular to the inclined surface. Well, that actually well, it makes sense, you know, because we want to um, not have any X and Y coordinate uh, components. We basically want the hydrostatic force acting onto the plane surface. So the direction it is correct. The direction is perpendicular to the plane surface. Magnitude, magnitude, we also got it. The magnitude is gonna be this one over here. Specific weight times the H coordinate of the centroid multiplied by the area. The magnitude of the resultant surface, magnitude is done. However, okay, what about the location? Okay, this one is where people or many students stumble upon.